I've never felt more connected to people uh, in my life. There was a moment this weekend when I was dancing uh, with D Nice on Instagram Live and every other African American and Latino person I have ever heard of. And I danced right here in my living room and cried because I knew what I was feeling was being felt by a hundred thousand other people. Um, when was the last time you felt that? I'm Manuel Bencourt, uh, the film and TV editor at Remesla, and today we're going to chat with Wilson Cruz, um, star of Star Trek Discovery and uh, executive producer of Visible Out on Television. And today we're going to talk about how they're practicing self care during, I guess, all of this. <laughs> um, so, hi, Wilson, how are you? I'm good, how are you? It's a pleasure, by the way. Oh, let's see. Okay. Um, I'm coping. I'm trying to to stay centered and sane uh, amidst all of this. Um, and you know, I'm I'm curious how how are you doing? How are you coping? You know, I'm I am good. Believe it or not, turns out I'm pretty good at being alone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, my life uh, in Toronto when we're shooting is pretty isolated anyway. So um, I feel like I've gotten some practice on. Uh, on, on this, um, but you know, all in all, I, I'm all right. I, I worry about my people and about my family and about my community. And so I think part of what's helped me um, navigate this new paradigm is making a concerted effort to reach out, to make contact. And it's interesting to me that I feel like a lot of people are doing that. I feel like a lot of people are um, using this moment of isolation to connect, to reconnect to um, the people we love, um, to the things that are actually important to us. Um, there's something to be said about solitude in the sense that it can help center you and help you um, understand what's important to you. You know, when everything is taken away from you, what is it that you long to bring back in? Mm -hmm. And so I hope, and I, I hope that people will use this time to kind of meditate on that. Like what has been superfluous in your life? And when this is over, what will you invite back? And more importantly, what will you leave behind. Mm. Um, so I've been thinking about that a lot. Uh, you know, I, I, I am who I am and I, I, I have um, an addiction to being physical and like, you know, keeping active. And so that has been a challenge. But again, life in Toronto has helped that, you know, a, a blizzard or a snow will come down and I'm like, I am not leaving this house. I'm going to figure out how to be active right here. So um, I have my, my little workout area right here. I do my morning yoga and my, my morning workout and my core stuff. Because I think, you know, I spend a lot of time reaching out, like I said, and a lot of time making contact. But I think it's important to take care of yourself during this time, a lot of self-care. And what is it that we can do to take care of ourselves so that we can be there for the people who need us? Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I do. I have my morning yoga. I have my my weight training, I have my meditation, um, and I have the connection I have to my people, you know? That's what's getting me through. I'm curious if you think this will change or do you think it's gonna be a, a different experience when we're in like week five as opposed to week two? Yeah, I'm pacing myself, you know? I really am. I've been thinking about that. Uh, you know, I, I, I really love and I really appreciate this um, this effort that people are making online and social media to really um, reach out and do something creative in order to keep ourselves connected. Um, I really appreciate that, but I also want, I don't want us to burn out mm. uh, really quickly on it, right? So I've been doing these Instagram lives. Uh, I, I started to do them just because I needed that. I needed to connect with my people and it was, a, it was an easy, quick way to like update people and that I'm okay, I'm all right, I'm, I'm, here's where I'm at and then check in with them and have conversations. Um, 
But, you know, people were like, oh, you should do it every day. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to commit to every day because <laughs> I know myself. There are going to be days when I'm not going to want to do it. And I'm, I'm going to honor that. So, yeah, I'm pacing myself a bit with interviews and with, you know, all of it. I also think, you know, putting our, there's a lot of pressure out there for people to feel like, you know, go, you know, write the great American novel and, you know, all of that, uh, you know, your opus. And, um, and that's great if you really want to do it, if you really can do it. But it's also okay if you just want to feel your feelings and watch a marathon of Golden Girls, <laughs> you know, until you feel motivated and inspired to do otherwise. Uh, I think that's okay. I think, you know, people are processing this moment in different ways. And I was having this conversation yesterday, actually, because I think that there's some of us, I know for me, um, I can get really um, intense <laughs> with my friends who are not doing what I'm doing or reacting to this epidemic, this pandemic, in the way that I'm reacting to it. And I have learned um, that I need to be more forgiving and more patient of, of people, right? So um, not everyone is gonna react the way that I do. And I have to allow some space for the fact that people are gonna do this in their own way. And um, the problem is, is that there are also people who are acting out um, you know, as a way of, of showing their, um, their strength, right. To like get through this in their own way. And this isn't about you. Yes, you are healthy and, you know, um, young and, um, the problem is, is that there are people who are not young and not healthy who won't, um, be able to manage this disease in the way that we can and so yeah I think the other thing that makes it uh sort of difficult and, and sort of fascinating in this moment is that we do have such a a window into how other people are dealing with this right like everyone is suddenly everyone is going on Instagram live suddenly everyone is sharing you know their workouts or their cooking recipes or everything like there's a sense of I can literally tell when someone's out for a walk or going for a picnic or going for a hike. And I'm like, oh my God, why do you do that? How do you balance that sense of like wanting to feel connected, but also not be overwhelmed by, you know, everyone sort of wanting to share or wanting to be together? Well, you know, I have, I have my meditation for that, right? Like, I think, I, I think I go inward. Um, and I get quiet, you know, I turn it all off. I silence the phones, the iPad, I shut off the computer. Um, I think so much of what we do is self comforting, right? Like we're, we're self soothing. And there are times when we have to look at it on our own by ourselves, quietly in the dark and deal with our own feelings and be honest with ourselves about where we are and you can't do that with you know everybody's instagram live and there, you have to take time for yourself and check in and soothe this child inside of you who's scared and wondering when this is going to be over and what life is going to be like when it's done and who in your family is going to be affected and what you are going to be able to do to support them um, all of those things are real and, and valid. And I think quiet time is important to process it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, you said that, uh, live shooting in Toronto sort of gave you sort of a trial run, um, for this, but obviously that time in Toronto was always interrupted by you guys were, were shooting, you were on set, you were seeing other people. Um, I'm curious how that sense of creativity and that sense of like, what you do as an actor, how you're dealing with having that suddenly um, sort of taken away or sort of in a way put aside for the time being. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been, I've been uh, going 100 miles an hour for the last 
two months because I have had finishing up Discovery in Toronto at the end of January, going right into publicizing Visible for Apple. And then I was supposed to come here um, and start work this week, actually, um, on one day at a time for an episode. And um, I'm really disappointed and my heart's broken because of it, because it's one of my favorite shows. Um, all of my scenes are with Rita Moreno and I, she's my, literally my childhood idol and my, she's the reason why I, I am able and willing to do what I do. Um, and, and it was a lifelong dream that I was about to, to live out and, and we're still going to do it. It's still going to happen. It's just, I, I was ready. Um, and, and my friend Justina was directing the episode. So I, it was, it's, it was a big disappointment. So I, you know, for me, I, I need something creative to do, right? And so part of it is writing, you know, um, and part of it is learning French. <laughs> you know, I, I said I was going to do that. And then finally, I was like, well, now you have all the time in the world. Um, so I'm trying to find creative outlets. Um, I don't cook. <laughs> Although now may be the time to learn. Uh, <laughs> but um you know, I do a lot of reading. I think reading is um, is food for my soul, right? Like it, I, I'm reading three books at the same time right now and I'm, whatever mood I'm in, that's where I go. Um, so, you know, I think novels are my, my uh, escape creatively at the moment. Yeah, so it sounds like it's a lot of, a lot of journeys inward. Um, what do you what do you think or what do you hope is going to happen once you know it's not going to happen one day where everyone's like okay you can go out but what do you hope is going to take place once we're all going to be able to be back to normal what are you most excited about what do you you know I think what I'm most excited about and I and I and I believe this I think the universe has asked us to shut it down and take a moment to look at where we are And that means look at the divisions in our society, in our culture, um, in this country right here, but also in the world. And so much of those disconnections are about an inability to see each other in each other. And I'm praying and hoping that what comes out of this pandemic is a reminder that we are all exactly the same. We are all fragile in the same way, physically. We have more in common than we don't. We hear that a lot, but look at what's happening in the world right now. Every single person you know is alone in some way or another, is checking in on the people they love, um, is afraid, um, worried. We all have that in common right now. I hope that when this is over, we remember that and that those were the things that really matter. But I think what will be clear is that we're gonna notice how clear the skies are. We're gonna notice that um, we can work from home, that there were jobs that um, we were told we couldn't do from home, um, that now suddenly we can. Um, we're gonna remember that the government was able to send us money. Something that, you know, it's called socialism. Apparently that was really scary to people about three weeks ago, but now completely welcome. <laughs> I hope that we don't take um, our leaders for granted after this. I think, I hope that we go to the voting booth in November and remember that the person that we're voting for is someone who needs to be able to handle crisis like this um, in a way that is um, appropriate <laughs> and successful, uh, that it takes someone with intelligence and empathy um, and a real knowledge of real people and their needs. 
I love this idea of the, of the world basically being like, you sit in that corner and you think about what you did and think what he really matters to you and then come back to me. Yeah, I mean, I think that's real. I think that's real. I mean, how else would we have been forced to really look at ourselves? What other way would, it, would the universe have gotten our attention? Yeah, and it is. I, you know, my, what, what scares me is what we sacrifice in this, who we sacrifice in this. Um, you know, my parents are in their 60s. My aunts are in their 70s. Um, I worry day to day about them. I have family members who, you know, have compromised immune systems and are um, already suffering, you know. Um, so, yeah, you know, losing them won't be worth it. But I do think that uh, we've been asked to, to sit our asses down. Thank you so much today uh, for, for chatting. And I feel like this is very, it's always, this is the thing that's been the most helpful to me is having these types of conversations, both with friends and with uh, sort of other people being like, okay, I, I can see where you're coming from. I can see what you're doing. And then I am not quite as alone as, as sometimes I can feel. We're not alone at all. I mean, I've, I've never felt more connected to people uh, in my life. There was a moment this weekend when I was dancing uh, with D Nice on Instagram Live and every other African American and Latino person I have ever heard of. And I danced right here in my living room and cried because I knew what I was feeling was being felt by a hundred thousand other people. Um, when was the last time you felt that? Yeah. The little victories. Yeah, the, the small things. Um, and I think we, we will take as many of those as we, as we can. Um, but thank you, Wilson. Thank you. And thank you for giving me a reason to do my hair today. Same <laughs> <laughs> here. I feel like, yes, this is not what, what we normally look like these days. I think um, I one more week before it's just hat and handkerchiefs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>